let's welcome Dr. Chandrima Saha, J.C. Bose Chair, Distinguished Professor, Indian Institute of Chemical Biology. Her work on neglected tropical diseases that has paved the way for mega breakthroughs. A very good evening to all of you and uh, thank you Dr. Chandrama for joining us today. I would like to add to that glorious introduction that you were also vice captain of West Bengal's first women's cricket team and also the first woman cricketer, cricket commentator for All India Radio in addition to the first woman to head the Indian National Science Academy. Now you know all of this fell into place when I read about your mother, Karuna, she was, I think, the first run in your family. She was one of the first women to study art in Kolkata. And um, she got invited by the Italian government to uh, study art on scholarship. And of course, she was an illustrious, accomplished vocalist as well. So how I could connect it is that how much of childhood mental conditioning has gone into shaping who you are today? Could you talk about that journey? Yes, I think uh, childhood shaping is very important because uh, it was not only my mother's uh, you know, brave approach to life. She was actually jailed by the British for taking down the uh, British flag from the, um, from the art college. So that element of um, strength I got from her and also the fact that I was allowed to do anything I choose and my father also uh, was a very liberal uh, person and he encouraged me to take science. So my, uh, and then teachers in school. So my um, whole uh, childhood bringing up was, uh, you know, con uh, was, uh, you know, egged forward by all my teachers, my parents, and mostly at home, I was given the independence to do whatever I, want, I would like to do. Uh, right. You know, I was reading somewhere that as a young scientist, you felt uh, very invisible among your male colleagues. Very few of them even acknowledged your presence. Of course, that did not deter you. You went on to fight the gender bias and you went on to prove yourself. You were saying that, you know, it was very subtle discrimination. Those uh, men did not um, celebr celebrate women, rather they tolerated women. Yes. Yes, that's uh, very important because I could not figure out at the beginning when, uh, when uh, it, I'm talking about the 80s, so it was a tri time, you know, long time back, that um, uh, some of our, my colleagues would not uh, share science with me. And I could not make it out whether they thought that women were not worth dis uh, discussing science with or it was the shyness of men for not talking to women. But I must say that this has changed quite a bit over the last four decades and uh, women are given more importance than they used to be, they were used to be given. Um, but a lot still needs to be uh, improved at the level of small towns, rural settings, where, you know, in the schools or where people are studying science and uh, they should, should, should actually should be given uh, the space to be themselves. Uh, right, Chandrama. You know, what can be done to encourage more and more women to take up STEM subjects? One of them, of course, you said, you know, you want your scientists to come forward and talk about their work uh, in local languages to young minds, young people, young girls out there. What else can be done? I think uh, it's, it's, it's all up to uh, us to create an interest in science in, uh, in young children. And so regional language is one thing by which you can actually go to the interiors of the country and, and, and uh, uh, give, them, give them your opinion about science and job opportunities and uh, how you can make a livelihood, how you can have fun with science. So that's, um, and that's how you need to encourage people and also they should be exposed to role models uh, because we don't see too many role models. How many 
uh, women we know who are great achievers in science other than the Nobel laureates. So role model is a, is a great way to communicate to uh, young women. Right, and there's also inadequate representation of women in the scientific community. But at the same time, you do not support reservation. May I ask why? Um, I do not support reservation in science. The, the reason is we are aiming for an efficiency, certain uh, degree of efficiency. And there are not enough women who are uh, very competent at after a certain level. So if you compromise in the quality there, then you are actually, um, uh, you are actually having an ins insufficient efficiency in the system. So I think um, uh, there, what 33%, uh, I don't know why it's 33%, 33% means is to have enough women representation in a committee or policy making body so that women's causes can be uh, taken forward. So, but since also reservation has a stigma attached to it, I think in science uh, we should ha not have uh, reservation but, uh, um, but to encourage more women to come into science so that the critical mass increases and we have enough good people. Uh, right. My next question is uh, that um, how science and technology can help to develop innovative solutions to the challenges uh, that India faces? Yes, you know, um, uh, science and technology is, is actually improving by leaps and bounds, I would say. And you see where we are today, could we have imagined about 40 years back where we are today, the, the technology revolution, the digital, uh, uh, the digital world. So uh, I think science and technology will go a long way in taking uh, us uh, in future and also women. We, who are empowered by technologies. You saw the, uh, the uh, Honorable Minister saying that, that we, we, technology has given a lot of power to women. So we trust that it's going to get us forward. Right. And you know, how do we break that uh, societal conditioning? Of course, first it's a family's conditioning and then the societal conditioning. You even talked about, you know, how uh, it was different in Kolkata than it is in Delhi when you were studying. You know, women were still discriminated in STEM subjects, in science classes. Could you take us through that journey? Um, yes, uh, STEM subjects, it's a, it's a, uh, they should be encouraged from home because there is nothing boy subject and girl subject. So they, both genders should have exposure to, uh, to, the same, to the same things that they want to do, they are interested in. So it's very important for the parents I think we need to guide parents, actually the parents to encourage their children to have the equal share of whatever they would like to do. And uh, that is where the most important thing, and not only parents, the society around, the schools, the school teachers, they should all encourage both girls and boys to uh, do the subjects that they like the best. All right, uh, Dr. Chandrika, if you could also tell us how is the research going in India and will it change the future, the face of healthcare in India? Um, you see, the research in India, uh, I mean, over the past decade, it has improved very much because we have had programs of bringing back scientists from abroad. I mean, that's been for, I said, last 15 years or so that scientists are coming back who are very well trained and they are taking, uh, they, are, uh, they are being employed by the different scientific institutes. And so the quality of science has really gone up. If you look at the data also that the, that the publications that we make are much better than before. And so I think the science has a very bright future uh, in the country. Right, and could you also talk about uh, the importance of women in the field of bioscience? Yes, you know, uh, as in, as everywhere, diversity is very important. And diversity can be geographic, diversity can be of language, diversity can be of gender. And because 50% of our population are women, the having women in, you know, for example, in the sustainable development goals, having women in working in all those areas, I mean, we will have an equal talent pool coming in. So that is why it is very important that women comes and uh, uh, joins the scientific workforce. 
Right. Uh, in all this, I would say that it is very important to nourish young minds, you know, and not put stereotypes in their minds saying that this is a boy thing or this is a girl thing. I think this is very important to do for parents, for the society in general. Yes, if you ask, uh, you know, it used to be like if you ask, uh, please draw a scientist to any ch child, they would draw, draw a man and they, I'm sure they still do. But, you know, to bring about looking, thinking about a scientist can be a woman. So that is important and that I think uh, will improve with time. I don't know how much time it will take, but I think uh, that uh, the scenario is changing. Right. And my final question to you, what was your dare to dream moment? I think my dare to dream moment was that I wanted uh, my own laboratory. So when I started a laboratory with uh, some of my students, I think that was my dare to dream moment and we ended up doing some very good science. Right, thank you so much for that inspiring conversation. I hope that more and more women, young women out there will come out and join the scientific community. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.